Today, according to Catholic Church, is the birthday of Jesus Christ. There is some difference of opinion with other Christian uh, followers, but all agree that it is about at this time during winter and so anyhow that is not so important exact date if it is not historically available but that we should here remember and pray for grace why because Shila Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his Bhagavad Gita commentary to this verse of fourth chapter, seventh verse, Yada Yada Hidharmasya Glanir Bhavati Bharata Abhyuthanam Adharmasya Tadatmanam Srijamyaham. Krishna says, again, the only rule for my appearance is that I have independent desire. I descend when I wish. When there is a discrepancy in dharma and a rise of adharma, then out of my own desire I appear. All of my injunctions for worldly governance are unconquerable. But eventually, due to the faults of time, when all those rules are broken due various unknown reasons, due to various unknown reasons, then a dharma gradually becomes strong. No one is capable of removing these faults except me. Therefore, I appear in this world along with my chit shakti to halt the degradation of dharma. It is not that you will only see me appear in Bharata Bhumi, that is India. I appear in the realms of the devas, demigods, and lower entities as necessary. Thus, do not think that I never appear in the realms of the mlechas and untouchables. For all such low-born persons, whatever dharma they accept as their swadharma, their own dharma, when it becomes degraded, I send a Shakti Abhesh avatar amongst them to protect their dharma. So this points to Jesus Christ and also Muhammad. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur explained that here Bhakti Thakur means them and also I heard from our Gurudev he said that uh, this some power of God or some energy of God appears as son and as prophet. Son means Jesus and prophet means Muhammad. According to eligibility of people, they will have to preach. So here, Bhakti Thakur is telling, whatever dharma they accept as their swadharma, according to their eligibility, when it becomes degraded, I send Shakti Aveshavatar amongst them to protect their dharma. Then further Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying, however, in Bharata Bhumi is the forum, no, in Bharata Bhumi, in the form of Varna Ashram Dharma, Svadharma is properly practiced. So I take more care to establish the Dharma of my subjects there. Therefore, many beautiful avatars, such as Yuga avatars, Anksha avatars, etc., can be observed in Bharata Bhumi, that is India. 
where there is no varna ashram dharma there is no proper execution of nishkama karma yoga means to observe the duties given in shastra according to your um, condition brahmin kshatriya all this and without desires for fruit that is called nishkarma karma yoga that if someone will practice then he will be become eligible to practice jnana yoga when his heart will be purified by nishkama karma yoga so here further says or the perfection of jnana yoga or the ultimate achievement of bhakti yoga so if someone does nishkarma karma yoga nishkama karma yoga without desires his observing varnash and dharma then when he will purify heart he will become eligible for jnana yoga and jnanis by association of devotees they will come to accept that ultimate achievement is bhakti yoga that is service of krishna but if it is observed among the untouchables that there is a significant advancement in bhakti then it should be understood to be connected to the spontaneous mercy of a devotee this we also saw in india when chaitanya mahaprabhu and his associates they were preaching they were, they are untouchables outside of vedic following but still they get awakenment of devotion even animals and trees mahaprabhu rescued and also mahaprabhu sent his own personal associates to preach and one of them is shilaisi bhaktadan sai maharaj he came to america and europe where there is no following of varnash and dharma but he made people devotees so that is grace of a devotee one is gradual uh, procedure to follow like nishkama karma yoga then jnana yoga ultimately bhakti yoga but one can also directly come to bhakti yoga by the grace of devotee this is also stated in rayaramananda there uh, sambat in the explanation of bhakti no thakur so two ways by gradual or immediate if there is grace of devotee so we saw that in practice uh, by shila sai maharaj he was also shakti avesh avatar empowered by nitananda prabhu uh, to do that work and today we are remembering jesus christ he is also one of shakti avesh avatars means when power or energy like our guru said this is given to some jiva to do god's work in this world then it is the same as coming in contact with god because like if you put fire near to means in close contact with iron then that iron will also acquire the nature of burning so when if someone will come in contact with that iron he will get burned so it is the same as coming direct in contact with fire so we should not take uh, uh, lightly this shakti avesh avataras one shakti avesh avatar is also parashuram and we sing keshava drita brigupati uh, rupa or yes jai jagadish hari because it is non different because that power is working there so like that shilavakt and bhaktino takur and shilavakt sanskar takur they explained that jesus christ was such shakti avesh avatar and power but he had to preach according to qualification of people so we don't see full blown krishna consciousness but 
some God consciousness to to bring that dharma back, which was lost in due course of time, <coughs> uh, for gradual advancement of the jivas. So you know, he appeared in miraculous way, Jesus. And many miracles he did in his life, curing incurable, even raising from death, giving life back, many miracles. And he was preaching about God, the Father, and his proprietor of everything. <clears throat> and that we should follow morality to satisfy God. And if you do good deeds, then after you die, that will be judged and you, you will either go to heaven or if you did sinful activities, then you will go to hell. So it is important how you act and God sees everything. So you cannot cheat. So up to this point, he was saying and also he showed miraculously uh, that similar to Haridas Thakur they wanted to kill him they could not kill Haridas Thakur because Mahaprabhu was embracing him and uh, but Jesus he also although he was like suffering outwardly we see like suffering but they are not suffering and about to die so in that uh, if someone is in that kind of situation he cannot say like jesus said that oh god you please forgive them they don't know what they are doing so still having compassion to them though they want to harm. So this is a Vaishnava quality. We are, we heard Trinada Pisunichana, Tarora Pisahisana, tolerant as a tree. Even if someone does harm to tree, tree still will give all benefit to that person. So like Horidas Thakur, he prayed <coughs> to Krishna to forgive those who are trying to kill him, praying for their welfare. Like that, Ambrish Maharaj did. Like that, Prahlad Maharaj did. And also Jesus did. That is not possible for any conditioned soul with, with false ego. It is possible only for someone who is established in real self, in relation with Krishna or God. It is possible. Otherwise, it is impossible. So he preached and uh, there are the commandments. So if someone will follow and his teaching also spread throughout the world is still going on. So you can see that there is empowerment. And if someone will actually follow, then he will get near to God. Uh, Bhakti Thakur explained in Chaitanya Shikshamrita that there are five grades of consciousness of people in this world. Immoral atheists, they will only do sense gratification by hook or by crook, by harming others without hesitation, no problem there. But next level is moral atheists, that is like Buddhists, they, they accept that you are accountable for your actions. So if you do bad actions, you will get bad result. So they are also careful not to commit violence, sinful activities, all this, in order to be liberated from this material existence. So they are immoral atheists or giants in India, they are also like this. And in uh, anywhere in the world when that type of consciousness is awakened, 
The, but next level is moral tastes. Those who believe in God and they follow some morality. Here all these religions uh, are coming inside. And superior to that is uh, in, in this category also those who are like Mayavadis, they are following Vedas and they are worshipping God, but in those two ways like Saguna Brahman and the Nirguna Brahman. So still that is uh, something in uh, for advancement and they are also moral. They are sattvic. Uh, they know if you act in Rajaguna and Tamaguna, you cannot become liberated. Only by Satyaguna, from Satyaguna, you can become liberated. So they are following. There in Chaitanya Shikshamrita, all these details are written, different varieties of uh, uh, consciousness. And then superior to them are those who have accepted proper Sambandha Gyan. That Krishna is eternal, Jiva is eternal, and Jiva is uh, means bhakti is eternal and now we are in bonded state due to our aversion to Krishna. So we have to uh, practice devotion to Krishna to come out and to attain him. That is called sadhan, sadhana bhakti. Those who are practicing proper sadhana, sadhakas, they are this fourth category. Because some bandha jnana is clear. And Abhideya is clear, Prayojana is clear. But they did not yet attain. And those who have attained Bhava Bhakti, that is when you accomplish Sadhana Bhakti and you enter into Bhava Bhakti on transcendental platform, such persons here in this world are highest. They have highest consciousness. And then when they give up this body by the will of Krishna, they will reach Vastu Siddhi. Now in Surup Siddhi they are staying in this world. So this five of consciousness. So moral taste is this Christianity, Muslim, uh, Muslim Dharma, Muslim religion. Uh, still there is some violence because it is not fully developed, it's not fully pure yet, but it is progressive. So uh, I remember one devotee, he told me his life story. He said in the beginning I was uh, fully atheistic. I was ridiculing those who believed in God. I made fun of them criticize them. But later on he was attracted to some spiritual practices by which you can quickly get some experience of consciousness and all pervadiveness, oneness, like that Mayavad type. So he said he got many experiences there and ultimately he saw that this world is like a playground. So without uh, any obstacle, without hesitation, without any fear, without anything, he was engaging himself in uh, this material acquisition. And he said, I got very quickly and uh, whatever like normal materialistic person desires like good job, a lot of money, house, wife, children, everything what people think will make them happy. He got everything. There was no lack in his material achievement. He got everything. But after some time he felt there is some lacking still in him. And he was wondering why it is so. I have everything what people think is necessary for happiness. Why I'm not feeling fulfilled? At that time when he opened 
himself, like inquiry from within why this is so, then he said at that time he became attracted to Jesus Christ. Why, what was his teaching and what this in churches, what they are speaking? So naturally he became attracted and uh, started going to church and also hearing about Jesus and his teaching and practicing. And then he felt that he's getting some fulfillment, what he was lacking before in that impersonalistic way and also enjoyment way. He felt he's getting fulfillment. But then after some time, he again, inquiry came to him and he directly addressed it to Jesus. He said, Jesus, you are speaking about God, the Father. But I don't know about him much. Who is he? What is he doing? Like this sort of inquiry came and he directly addressed to Jesus. Then after some days, when he was going in, in the city, then he saw some devotees sitting, his con devotees sitting and doing Sankirtan, Harinam Sankirtan sitting. And then this person suddenly he felt that Jesus is indicating to him, you go there they know or there there you will find out about god who is god what he's doing or this he felt like that jesus is indicating this so he came and he met devotees and he also got books and went to temple and like this and he became devotee so gradual development is coming so Jesus is was also one uh, uh, step part in that path in my life also my personal life also as, as from birth I had this faith in Jesus I was attracted and God and I believed that after you die it will be shown to you what you did good deeds and bad deeds. That is why I, I never stole anything in shop. Other schoolmates, they were sometimes stealing some lollipops. No one, of course, uh, caught them, but I had that feeling, maybe you are not caught, but after we will die, this will be known. It will be shown and we will have to uh, get the result of that. So I had this belief and Jesus attracted and praying to God. And then also when I came in contact with devotees, is gone devotees, when they were speaking about Krishna, then I also felt, yes, this is the same God. I had faith before, the same God, not another God, same God. Now I, I know or I hear something more about him as Krishna and doing this. This is his form like this. Then by the disciples and uh, followers of Srila Sai Maharaj, I, I came to Gurudev ultimately because Sai Maharaj spoke that it is necessary to accept guidance and he spoke very nicely about Krishna. So by his inspiration, I got that inspiration and Krishna fulfilled me that. That time I did not know that the Gurudev met Swami Maharaj before. But later on I came to know. And the Swami Maharaj requested our Gurudev, you come with me for preaching. 
So it is same line. So what I what I want to say is there are different like lights on the path. They are showing you the way how to progress. So Jesus is also one, also in my life, one level of guidance and how gradually you can progress. So I'm grateful to him and to all on who helped me in my way and are helping me in my way to reach that love of God. Jesus also spoke, but not in details, because it was not possible for to tell everything. But we should not think that he does not know. It is like in school, some teacher will teach in first class, A, B, C, D. We see him teaching A, B, C, D, but we should not conclude that teacher knows only A, B, C, D. Like that, we should not think low of Jesus because anyone who is empowered by God, he is not ordinary soul. Srila uh, Siddhar Maharaj explained this. When he declared that Srila Sai Maharaj is Shakti Abhesh Avatar, empowered by Nitalana Prabhu, then some felt a bit offended. Oh, then you think he has no power, that is not his power, that is only Nitalana's power, but he is useless. Then Shidhar Maharaj said, no, it is, I did not mean like this. It is not that just anyone can get empowerment. If someone gets empowerment, it means he is not ordinary. He surrendered. That is why he got empowerment. So it is not that he is useless and some empowerment is working. No, it is working through certain special soul. So Jesus also we should not take lightly by seeing what he was teaching and someone will say but he did not teach vegetarianism but someone say that he did and then it was spoiled in due course of time so many things and that he went to India it may be true we don't know but the main point is even if we just accept what is commonly given, we should not take lightly him as a person because someone empowered by God is not ordinary person. Also Muhammad not ordinary person. If you are Muslim, when you are saying Muhammad name, then you have to say peace be on him. Always with respect, you have to say it is good. Like we also before saying the name of Guru, you have to say Om Vishnu Pat, Ashtotrasata, all this Srila, not just directly uttering name. It is not you have to with respect, you have to take the name of Guru, Vaishnav and Supreme Lord. So all are practicing this. They are not ordinary persons. They are sent by God, empowered by God. Like Sai Maharaj also, he had to go to America. There was no Varna Ashram, all this. So he made them devotees according to what was possible at that time. He wrote many things in book, but in practical dealings, he was not uh, fully uh, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, practice or this about Rasa Tattva because it was not possible. Something, so he himself ad admitted this before his disappearance that I could not fully train them. So he requested his god brothers to help his disciples. Of course, he wrote everything in book and he spoke everything. And he had realization of Vrindavan Ras himself. 
but he could only uh, give as much as was possible and they could also develop as, as much as was possible. But he said it is not, uh, you have to further develop with the help of my God brothers. So they have Shilashidar Maharaj and others and now also. So those who uh, they can develop. So by seeing Swami Maharaj's preaching, and how he engaged his disciples, mainly using their talent to somehow Krishnaize it to, for the service of Krishna. And this thing, so someone may feel he's not advanced. He was not speaking about Manjari Bhav, and he was not speaking about Ashtakalya Lila and these uh, things. So his low class. They are wrong. He was teaching what he was ordered to teach according to eligibility of people, but that does not mean that he is on that level. He himself revealed that uh, that Brajabhap love so we should not take lightly. So different gurus, they will appear for different stages of advancement. And gradually we can uh, come to the ultimate goal of that Krishna Prema in whatever asa Krishna attracts us. So all these are there and we should not take lightly or have any disrespect because all are necessary, all are helpful. And personally, they are more advanced or fully advanced uh, than what they, they are teaching us. Our Gurudev also, he was speaking through a Pralacharit. Why? Not because he needs, but because we need. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also heard Dhruva Pralacharit so many times to be example because we need that. But gradually, according to our qualification, we can advance. So today or in these days, I don't know exactly, is the appearance of Jesus Christ. So, uh, also, when he did this pastime of dying on the cross, then also he performed another miracle. They, in that grave, they put in that tomb, not grave, tomb, after, I think, three days, one came and saw that he is not there anymore. He rose from death and some, some saw him. So like that, all his life is full of miracles. Why? Because empowered by God. Like Pralad Maharaj. Hiranyakashipu tried to kill him in so many ways and his demon all, but they could not do anything to him. Because always protected by God. Horida Stakur also, and Horida Stakur also played the pastime like I'm dead. But after some time when they threw him into Ganga, then again he came to life and was chanting loudly. Then they understood, oh, he's a real saint. So like with Jesus, everyone believes that he's a real saint or sent by God. Some consider him him, himself God, one of the three aspects of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Spirit. So Son of God is also God. Like Guru, Guru is also God, Sevak God. One is Bishoy or um, Uh, Sebya Bhagavan, 
on the Seva Bhagavan. Served God and servant God. They are both transcendental. No materials. They are one. Shaksha Dharite na Samasta Shastra. Uktas Tataba Vata Eva Shami. Kintu Pravorja Priya Eva Tasya. He is one with God because he is on that transcendental platform and fully surrendered to him, his eternal servant, fully engaged. So, uh, absolute counterpart of God, his paraphernalia, and fully empowered by God. He is only omniscient, he is only potent, also Guru. Because whatever power Krishna has, he can give to or he gives to his devotee he, uh, whatever is necessary for his service he can do. We should not take lightly. So although we are all sons of God, because we are parts of his potency, we are all, all sons and daughters of God, but the Jesus as the son of God is also son of God, but there is some difference because he is fully surrendered to God and God empowered him. So for us, he is worshipable. Like Nitya Mukta, Nitya Bada, those who are bound and those who are liberated. Narad Gosami first was playing the pastime of being conditioned soul. But by sadhana, he became sadhana siddha, perfected, liberated. So he is worshipable for us. Though we are all jiva tattva, but we worship Sri Vastakur, Narad Muni, as guru. Because there is also a difference. He is fully surrendered and he is empowered and he got that transcendental form. Like that, Jesus is also worshipable for us as God. Uh, as you have devotion to God, that much you, 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 you have to have to Guru also. Because Guru is his representative and empowered and also surrendered. And he has that power to awaken devotion and give us service. So he is worshipable for us. And there in Shastra it is stated, if someone has same devotion to Guru as he has for God, then he can understand the point of Shastra, the devotion. So both we have to worship Vishnu and Vaishnava. That is Madhya Madhikar. They, they understand the importance of a Vaishnava. Vaishnava is not different from Krishna, pure devotee. So he performed miracles. And some also, they say, they uh, saw him that he appeared in their heart or outside and someone, uh, some have different experiences with him or with saints following him. So many things. According to degree of surrender, we can get he is still living we can have connection, like with the Gosamis, other Vaishnavas. If we are surrendered, we can have connection. Also with Jesus, we can have connection. And he can help us according to our qualification, like in this devotee's case. He told him, now you go here. In this line, you will come to know or in this organization, in this line, in this school, this teaching, you will come to know more about who is God. So if Jesus does not know more about God than he spoke, then how he knows that they are speaking about God more? So he knows, but he personally does not teach because that is not his duty. But if someone becomes eligible, he will point you, now you go to Vaishnavas. Also that Professor Nixon we are hearing, he was also an atheist, fool. But then, and he was ridiculing all 
Christians, never went to church, never read Bible, nothing. But when his plane was shot, then at that time, by some previous Sukriti, he said, oh, if there is any almighty God, now only you can help me. Please help me. And he survived. All others died. By miracle, he survived. Then he remembered, oh, I was praying to God. So God exists. Then he was going to church and was practicing and reading Bible and everything. But then he had so many questions, deep questions, that priests could not answer him. He was asking so much. Then they, they said, we don't know so much how you are asking, but we heard that in India, they are also having many experiences with God. They are having direct experience with God. So you go to India. Then he went to India and he was reading Vedic scriptures and Vedanta Sutra, and then he met that lady, devotee, in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Radharaman temple, that line of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. She was devotee, and from her he heard Srimad Bhagavatam, and he became mad after Krishna Prema. I want Krishna Prema. He said in Vedanta Sutra, I got food for my intellect. But in Bhagavatam, I got food for my heart. So I want that Krishna Prima. Then she initiated him and also gave him the name Krishna Prima. And he met Srila Bhakti Siddhanta in Mayapur and heard from him about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Later, he also himself became guru in that line. And the president of India also declared him as a saint. So how it happened, you see, by step by step. In his life also one part was Christianity. And they, in, they uh, directed him, you go to India. So any help, we should not uh, have disrespect. Everything is necessary at certain point for our advancement. So Jesus, when time comes, he will help you to go further in the same line, means how to develop love of God. He indicated, like Swami Maharaj indicated, and those who are sincere, souls for eternal welfare, they will always get guidance. In all stages of their life and development, they will always get guidance how they can progress. And a previous guide will indicate next guide like this. Ultimately, we have to come to, if our Asa is there, we have to come to Rupa Manjari. That is what Srila Bhakti Sanskar came to give. Rupa Nuga Bhakti Da. We are saying in his Pranamantra. Krishna Sambanda Vigyana Daine Pravinuha Madhur Jodjwala Premadya Shri Rupa Nuga Bhakti Da. So gradually we can come. So we are hearing his Harikata in Radha Kunda. Yesterday we heard that above causal ocean is the Lord's effulgence, that is Brahma Jyoti. There is no Triguna there. But Jyoti Rabyantare Rupam Atulam Shama Sundaram, yes, so I am bowing down to Jesus Christ. I, whenever I see on the road or wherever the, that cross is there in Jesus, I always bow down because I'm grateful to him. So I'm bowing down to his lotus feet and praying for his causeless mercy. 
So Jyoti Rabhyantare Rupa Matulam Shama Sundaram. Within that effulgence is the beautiful, incomparable form of Shama Sundar. In Baikunta, there is spiritual personality. There, in the mood of reverence, are two and half rasas. That is Shanta, Dasya, and half Sakya, oh, and reverence Sakya. The Supreme Lord possesses infinite energies, and both spirit and non-spirit, that is matter, are under his control. This is the conception of Ramanuja. The Supreme Lord is the proprietor of spiritual energy and non-spiritual energy. Chit and Achit, uh, Jiva and or internal potency and marginal potency and Maya, Bahiranga potency externa. The conception of non-Vaishnavas is to enjoy the world. But this is not the conception of the Vaishnavas. Neither enjoying the world nor renouncing the world is the conception of the Vaishnavas. Here, there are many who consider themselves enjoyers. In Vaikuntha, there is one enjoyer without a second, no one else without a second. But there are many servants. Lakshmi Shata Sahasra Sam Brahma Sebemanu from uh, Brahma Sahita. Govinda is served by hundreds of thousands of goddesses. There is a distinction between a reverential worship and confidential service. You see, like this also in uh, Brihad Bhagavat Amrita, we see how many guides Gopakumar had on the way in higher material planets like Indra and Brigu and then four Kumaras and like this and then in Bekunta and in Ayodhya, all this. All guides. And, but ultimately he came to Brindavan. So there is difference between Aishwarya worship and Madurja worship confidential. At that, when the body given by our mother and father will be retired, we will attain uninterrupted service. That is Vastu City. The Supreme Lord is the independent Supreme Person, and we have to accept His independent will. Regulations are for those whose propensity for service has not arisen and who are bound by the gross and subtle bodies. So, why the bhakti is for those who don't have natural strong desire to serve Krishna, spontaneous. For them, you need to follow all these things to purify your consciousness so that that may be awakened. When it is awakened, then no need. Naturally, you will serve. Otherwise, while bound by the gross and subtle body to make a show of following our supramundane natural dharma is simply to become a mundane imitation, imitationist, Prakrita Sahajya. So if I am bound by gross and subtle body, I am not in Saruf Siddhi, but I, uh, I make a show. I am Manjari, I am Saka, I am this, making a show. Then that is Prakrita Sahajism, imita imitation. The Raganuga can start also for those who are bound if they get association of Raganuga devotee. But on that stage when Anartas and all this is still there, together with Vaidhi, not without Vaidhi, and also not with conception that I already attained ultimate goal. 
if that conception is that I don't need any VD, any VDs, and I already attained my Manjari Suru, then that is wrong. Wrong uh, application of that process. That process you can do if qualified guru is there, but you have to understand what is your position. You are now in Ajata Ruchi Raganuga Sadhana, before attaining Ruchi Raganuga Sadhana. So you have to do all the vaidis given by Guru. And also you should not think that now you are already realized so. Though Guru told you in your Siddha Swarup, you are this and this Manjari, you, you have this cloth, you have this Seva, he told you. And maybe you also felt something in that uh, bhav, it is okay. But that does not mean that you already attained that realization fully and that there is no need for you to do any vaidi or any sadhana, all this. Then it will be wrong. Wrong application of that process. And Guru will, if Guru is bona fide and he will see that someone has such misconceptions, then he will correct him. But if Guru is not good and he will approve, yes, you are Manjari, no need to do anything, then that is another, that is Ampasampralaya. Then. So, making a show or that is like they're making a show for name and fame. But here it is only if the process is good, if the guru is good. But due to immaturity, some misconception about my level of advancement is there. Then this is not uh, same as like intentionally making a show, but only immature understanding of where you are, what you have to do. So those who are sincere, they will be uh, corrected by their guru and then they can advance in their bhajan. So tomorrow we will hear about Srila Bhakti Pradip Tirta Gosai Maharaj and if some time also further this uh, Radha Kunda Harikata.